So this is a workshop on crafting your teaching statement. So I, I want to do a very quick introduction and then I'll turn things over to Ian. Um, Ian is Senior Associate Director at the Center for Teaching and Learning at Penn. Um, and we're incredibly grateful to him for doing this workshop today. So Ian, you can feel free to take it away. So I have um, you know, 11 plus years of experience uh, working at CTL and working with folks on teaching statements. I've also seen lots um, being on the other side of the table on search committees, both in my former faculty life as a historian uh, and in, in searching uh, and doing searches in, in our own shop. So hopefully I have some, some useful things uh, to share with you about how to, to crack this um, sometimes peculiar genre. So why do hiring committees ask for this? Here from the, the Chronicle in a font conveniently the same color that I had already gone with, we have this, uh, this op-ed piece by Leonard Casuto, who's an English professor at Fordham, who says it's time for teaching statements to die, right? He sees teaching statements as being what, uh, like a bad prompt. If you give your students a bad prompt or a bad assignment, you're setting them up to, to fail. And he is of the opinion that teaching statements are doing that to folks who are at the beginning of their career. You simply don't have enough experience to have the perspective that asking for a teaching philosophy, um, uh, what it would demand. Uh, now, not everyone agrees with, uh, with Professor Casuto. Um, he suggests that people should submit annotated syllabi, and that's a good window onto how someone thinks about teaching. Uh, I agree, that would be an interesting exercise. But the fact is, um, increasingly commonly, uh, across all fields and across all types of institutions, the, the ask in the job ad is going to include a teaching statement. And so we need to work on, on how to do that. Just to confirm what I said, I was looking around at some job ads. Um, this is from one of my alma maters, major research university, anthropology, looking for a statement of teaching philosophy, and then quote unquote, evidence of teaching effectiveness. or in molecular genetics and cell biology at the University of Chicago, you know, the as researchy as a research institution can get, we want a teaching statement that can describe the candidate's experience in teaching diverse students. Now there at least they're giving you some specific guidance as to what the content of that statement should be. So you may find there may be some of you uh, whose discipline doesn't routinely ask for this. There, you may see it in some job ads and not others, and some of your fields are, are assuredly going to ask every time. Um, and as you navigate the different asks in job ads, um, our colleagues at Career Services, of course, are, are there to support you, but so are, are my colleagues. Will a great teaching statement get you a job? The magic eight ball says it looks doubtful. I want to just be candid here about what we're doing um, without undermining my own workshop. But you know, let's not pretend that the teaching statement is the most important part of your job application because it's it's not right. Your cover letter, your vita, your letters of recommendation, right? These are the the letters of recommendation, the gatekeeping role that they play. This is is well known. Now, am I saying that you should not care about the teaching statement. Well, I wouldn't be doing this if I thought that were the case, but I don't wanna pretend that uh, there's a magical teaching statement that you can write that's gonna get you a job. So I am biased towards professors of English in my selection of, of extracts here today, but this is Jim Lang. He, he writes frequently in the Chronicle about teaching topics. He's a good person to, to look for. He's written several books on teaching, uh, also a nice guy, um, but here he says, you know, he's been in countless search committee meetings discussing applications and teaching philosophies are mentioned rarely. And when they are, it's because of a memorable or specific story or strategy that the candidate described, which gives us a little um, preview of what we might be looking for in crafting our statements. What I will say is depending on the institution that you're applying to, the teaching related documents are going to get a closer look or not, or it may actually depend on the temperament of the committee member um, reading the files. It stands to reason that at more teaching intensive institutions, the teaching materials are going to be given greater priority in the assessment of candidates, but in lots of research universities, depending on the culture of a department, there are going to be people who care deeply about teaching who are going to be reading uh, with avid interest. 
uh, the teaching related pieces of your application. Um, and again, so the, the goal here is to have your teaching materials be of the same caliber as your research materials, right? My, my operating hypothesis is that you've received lots of mentoring, I hope you have, about um, presenting yourself as a scholar, and I want to help you present yourself as a teacher equally well so that you can put your um, best possible version of yourself forward to, to um, search committees. This may be obvious, but it's important to think about who your audience is. Uh, it's going to be faculty who are relatively senior. That is, they're, everyone on the committee is, is, is senior to you, pretty much. Um, but it, the committee may also skew more towards your tenure, the tenured faculty, which is going to make them more senior. Generally, but not always, but these are going to be people who are in your field, broadly speaking. Some of you may be, be multidisciplinary. You may be applying to jobs in multiple fields. And that would, would make the conversation slightly different. But for the most part, you want to remember that you're writing for people who teach and research in your discipline. And so don't be afraid to lean into that and make this a teaching statement where um, your discipline is clear. Sometimes I'll read statements by folks where there's actually no indication of what field they're in. And I think that, that that's a mistake. You want to imagine uh, an audience that is reading a, a possibly gargantuan number of files, some folks reading very selectively, pardon me, as there's some emergency activity here in West Philadelphia. Um, but there's going to be somebody in that committee who is reading everything with great care. You want to imagine, and I don't mean to sound naive, but you want to imagine a, a reader who is reading in good faith so that the bar is not, do you teach the way they do, but are they persuaded that the way you teach works for you and more importantly works for your students? And so what I want you to think about is not, you know, don't isolate the teaching statement from the other pieces of your job search. And obviously this, this uh, boot camp is predicated on, on taking on all of these different pieces uh, more or less simultaneously. But I really want you to think about what is the narrative about you as a teacher that you want your materials to communicate to a hiring committee? And how are these different pieces, the cover letter, your CV, teaching statement, possibly a teaching portfolio, or as we saw, evidence of teaching effectiveness, and your letters of recommendation. How are these working together to communicate that teaching narrative, just as parts of this are working to communicate um, your narrative of who you are as a researcher? So not to be too prescriptive, and I, I am just setting the table here for the specifics about the teaching statement, but just to allude to these other pieces in your cover letter, Generally speaking, I think you should envision having uh, two paragraphs on teaching, one about the experience that you have, and then one about what you're going to do at Carnegie Mellon or uh, whatever school you're applying to. Your CV is where there's going to be that chronological account of your teaching experience, um, probably with brief description of the roles, because it's not always clear what a, a TA does. So you'd want to indicate, you know, make sure that the reader understands that when you are a TA for that immunology class, you led recitations, uh, or you know, make clear when you were the instructor of record in a summer course or what have you. But that's the only place where you wanna have this sort of step-by-step -step chronological account of what teaching you've done. Your teaching portfolio might include sample syllabi, all of the any institutional teaching evaluations you have, and you might have a supplemental letter there. Let's say somebody you TA'd for, um, observed you teaching, they have nothing to do with your, your committee, um, there might be a teaching specific letter that you would want to solicit from them and that would, could go in your teaching portfolio. And then the main letters of recommendation and here, and I'm going to harp on this repeatedly. Um, sorry, I can't, um, I'll, I'll attend to the chat. I see a comment in the chat. I'll attend to that in a second when I stop sharing. Um, I ask for your patience there. Um, but of your three main letter writers, which of them is equipped to talk about your teaching? This is something that I really want you to have, and I want your faculty to step up and make it possible for you. 
the gold standard for a faculty letter for a job search is going to have you know two pages attesting to the quality of your project and then be able to say and by the way they are a crackerjack teacher how do i know this i saw them give a guest lecture in my class it was on this topic and let me tell you what was so marvelous about that lesson really going into detail right american letters of reference are like american vehicles and um you know soda sizes they're big they're long they go into detail and you really need i want you to have that where at least one person who knows your scholarship can also attest to um, your teaching ability and i'm gonna at the end of this i'm gonna i am gonna pause for questions so uh, if you can um, they occur to you hang on to them and i'm happy to talk about that so what is it that we're aiming to write here right don't let the word philosophy fool you. This is not meant to be abstract. It's not meant to be an articulation of your understanding of how humans learn. Um, it's really much more pragmatic, concise and concrete account of teaching goals and strategies. One to two pages. There are some people who swear up and down. It should only be one. There may be some schools that limit it to one. Um, but I think you should probably, um, you might want to have a one page version and a two page version ready. If, um, I wouldn't go more than two, uh, but some of you, you know, two pages would give you a chance to, to offer a more rounded picture of your teaching. And if you have that opportunity, uh, I think you should take it. It's not just about you and what you do. It's also importantly about what you have your students do, what you see them produce and how that feeds back into your um, thinking about your teaching. Here again, it's not to say that you've already done all the things. It's that you are invested in teaching, you are reflective, and that you are open to trying to grow as a teacher, which frankly is something we all do across our, our teaching lives. Uh, it's not like you figure this all out when you're, you're 30 and just lock down your pedagogy for the next four decades, or at least most of the time, that's not how it goes. It's not about persuading the readers that you're a great teacher, although you might be. And yes, at some level, they want to be reassured that you are, are ready to, to enter their classrooms and succeed. But it, it, you know, this, you're at the beginning of your career and, and it's totally appropriate to, to sort of show that you are uh, open to evolving as a teacher. And that, again, you want to motivate the reader to talk to you about teaching and what you may find in uh, screening interview or a campus invite is that the person literally has your teaching statement in hand and says, tell me more about this uh, class that you taught or tell me more about this um, student group project you designed, right? That's, uh, that's maybe an optimistic way of thinking about it, but that, that it's ideally will inspire a collegial conversation about teaching because your readers are people who are in the classroom themselves they experience ups and downs. They know that it's difficult to teach students this particular concept. And so you wanna think about writing something that's gonna be generative, hopefully of a, of a dialogue with those folks. So what are you gonna write about? You wanna, again, I wanna emphasize that most of the time you wanna really think about what's particular to teaching in your discipline. And then in your field and the kind of teaching you do, what are the most important elements? What are the most important teaching settings and what are the, the places that are really going to, you know, what are your priorities or what are the places that, that are going to showcase your thoughtfulness about your teaching? So for most people, you're going to want to have some, some, a paragraph in your teaching statement that talks about what it's like in your classroom. What are you doing in your classroom? Now, that could be a lecture space. It could be a discussion space. You might have both. You may wish to have something on uh, assignment design, showing how you're thoughtful about that. Um, for, for literary scholars or, you know, you might want to have something on teaching students how to read, or if you're an art historian on teaching students how to look uh, at an image, teaching students how to work with data. Um, for our STEM colleagues, mentoring might be something that's actually been an important part of your experience so far, mentoring undergraduates in the lab or junior doctoral students. Um, and that that's going to be an important piece of, of your role moving forward. I, I meet a lot of folks who have a lot of mentoring experience, but often don't write about it in the teaching statement. I would argue that in many contexts, that's a, a really important part of your teaching. 
You can be thinking about content related goals or skill building roles or affective dimensions. What kind of classroom community are you trying to create? Things like that. I think it can be very useful to think about common challenges in your field where everyone who teaches uh, biochemistry knows that X and Y are difficult things to get students to grok. Uh, and so you might wanna pick one of those things where any reader is gonna say, right, I identify with that challenge. Uh, and then here's my strategy for overcoming that. And again, that this you are a work in progress and it's okay for this document to reflect the way that that is true. I do think it's important to have your statement align with the kind of job you're applying for. You're not, it, it's highly unlikely you're gonna be able to have 40 or 50 bespoke teaching statements where you handcraft one for each job, but you might wanna say, look, there's basically two kinds of jobs I'm applying for, two types of institutions. Here's my basic version of, of the undergraduate intensive institution. And here's my research university teaching statement, which might, for instance, talk about teaching graduate students. And parts of this, you know, this is your teaching statement is grounded in the experience you have, whatever experience you have. I know that teaching experience is, is very unevenly distributed across doctoral programs. And, and for some of you who may have done your PhDs, um, outside of the United States, you, you may have had very few opportunities or no opportunities to be in an American classroom. We'll work with whatever you have, but it's fine and desirable that parts of your statement can be forward-looking, right? Uh, it's okay to talk about what you will do, even if you haven't done it yet, but showing the reader how you're thinking about that teaching context that's coming up. How do you write this up? Be concrete and specific. And when you've been concrete and specific, go back and be even more concrete and specific. I really think that this is what it's about. Think back to that quote that I shared with you from James Lang. Um, you want to assert what's important to you without disparaging how other people might teach. Um, you know, sometimes, sometimes I see from, from younger, younger folks that they might have some things in their teaching statement that seem a little bit ageist or, or uh, and I think in general, you want to remember who's, who's reading this. I already said before, don't offer a chronological narrative, but you want to select your examples so that as I read your statement, I'm reminded of that breadth of teaching experience that I saw on your Vita. And again, I, I said it twice because it's important, but you've never taught a 300 person intro class. That's what they're hiring you to do. Behooves you to say something about your vision for running uh, a large lecture class in accordance with um, your teaching priorities. I am gonna just end here with two things about moving forward and then I'm gonna stop sharing and, and we can have some conversation, but I just wanted to, to put this in now rather than leave it to the end in case people, people have to leave. Um, this is not the only time you're gonna have to write a teaching narrative if, if you, um, uh, have end up having the, the good fortune of, of getting a, a tenure track position. You're going to have a third year review most of the time. There's going to be a teaching narrative, a research narrative, and a service narrative for that process. And when you go up for tenure, you're going to have to do it again. And so this is, is not just a sort of one and done document for the job market. And I would encourage you, keep, keeping a teaching diary is maybe a little bit ambitious, although a guy at Emory kept one and got published, had it published as a book by Penn Press as it happens. That was pretty clever of him. Um, but at least keeping an open document where you can jot down noteworthy things, something happened in class today that seems like it could be the, the beginning of an anecdote for a future draft of your teaching statement. So I would try to try to keep notes on that as you're going and not try to reconstruct things, these things from, from memory. Um, again, I'm belaboring this, but it's important, and I earnestly want your people to do this for you. If at all possible, get one of your mentors to watch you teach. Engineer an opportunity for them to do that. Do a guest lecture for them. You want one of those letters talking about your teaching in addition to your scholarship. <clears throat> Next best, say somebody who's not on your committee observed you teach they can write to their colleague and your, your uh, PI, your committee member can say, I haven't had the opportunity to see Helen teach. 
but let me share with you what my colleague, Professor Jones said uh, about the day that she observed Helen teach. Um, you'd also wanna work on one or more sample syllabi. I think it's just good to have in your pocket thinking about sort of what's a bread and butter survey course in your, uh, in your field um, and what might be an upper division one. Again, some folks are gonna ask for these uh, either at the beginning of the search or they might come back with the supplemental materials. Um, but again, if you're working on something that you're gonna end up teaching at some point, it's not, it, it's time well spent. I would already acknowledged and I'll say it again, please uh, reach out to our, our colleagues in career services who you are acquainted with, otherwise you wouldn't be here, but we, uh, we happily collaborate uh, and, and work together with, uh, uh, with job seekers. Um, how can CTL support you? We are happy to spend time with you reading teaching statements, looking at teaching portfolios, looking at the teaching related pieces of your cover letter. We wanna stay in our lane uh, and, and you know, hopefully you have other readers who can help you with the research stuff. Happy to do mock screening interviews with some teaching questions. Again, my, my assumption is that you get practice answering questions about your research. You might not get practice answering questions about your teaching. Increasingly schools, even research universities are asking people to do both a job talk and a teaching demonstration or sometimes a teaching presentation. Happy to talk you, uh, you know, help you generate ideas about that. Happy to have you come to our space, uh, at least beginning in September, uh, to do a mock teaching demo. Um, oftentimes your, your department will make time for you to do a mock job talk. They don't have time to help you on a teaching demonstration. Please come talk to us. Email me, I would be happy to hear from you. Or if you don't wanna talk to me, email CTL help and say, please refer me to someone who is not Petri. Um, but please do come and see us, whether it's uh, you know two weeks from now or uh, 18 months from now. We really wanna do anything we can um, to support you.